Hey everybody, Kit here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part six. This is part six? I think it's part six of Adam and Alice's prequel story. <laughs> oh no. Alice is pregnant. Mm. Adam owes a lot of money that they don't have. 15000 Yeah. Um. Mmm. They are in a pickle, aren't they? So, um, just a little bit of a warning here. Um, this episode does go into topics of abortion and miscarriages and infertility. Um, so if those are things that you're not exactly 100% comfortable with, that would be your warning. Um, it is only talked about, okay? The activities therein are not actually done. Specifically, Alice is just considering it as an option. Um, yeah, she's panicking and does she want this pregnancy? Does she want this child? No, what do I do about it? And that's her first boom. So yeah, fair warning. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Adam was exceptionally stressed. The apartment was a mess. Their finances were not what he was needing. Work was a disaster and Alice was being weird. A little fat. Avoiding him. Not what he wanted. As for Alice, well, Adam said they needed money, so she went to work. Work was no longer even remotely enjoyable, and being pregnant was the worst. She constantly had to pee, and she was craving food all the time. And she had to figure out what to say to Adam. She needed to confide in someone, and her best Yanika was the best option. So they met for the Spice Festival one night, with Anika having no idea what was going on. Uh... Alice, are you fat as a whale and in heels? Yes, Alice complained. Well, I, I meant... Uh, Anika was struggling with what to say. Clearly, her friend was very distraught over the obvious situation. Pregnant? Yes, and I hate it. I don't want it. Tears streamed down Alice's face. Oh, well, that's... Anika gushed and stopped as soon as she was able to process. I don't want it. Trying not to be an inconsiderate friend. Oh, Alice, sweetie, I I'm, I'm sorry. Does Adam know? W what does he think? Her stomach rumbled with hunger, but nausea roiled inside of her throat. He doesn't know. Alice didn't know what to do. He doesn't? For Anika, this was hard to hear. Alice always fawned over Adam. From the outside looking in, their relationship looked weirdly perfect. But for something this big, Alice didn't tell him? A am I the first person who knows, Alice? Yes. I was wondering if you could help me get rid of it, maybe? Or... I don't know. Anika threw her head in her hands. I... I, I was... I... Anika wanted to help her friend, but... She and Damon had been struggling with infertility. To just... Get rid of a baby? It was too much for her to bear, for her to speak on. 
I... Please, Alice. I... Please don't ask me that. I, I can't. Alice didn't know what to say, watching her friend who was always so cheerful be crushed like this. She didn't know what she was asking. She didn't know how Anika had struggled. She didn't know. Nausea crept up once again. Everything about her body felt wrong, so utterly alien. She wanted it to end. Wanted it to stop. Tears about everything overwhelmed her under those night stars. And it was those tears that gave her just an itty-bitty bit of clarity. She had helped pregnant couples at work before, and those who had struggled. She had a co-worker who had miscarriages, and she suddenly felt like a plum hole. Anika, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked. She didn't need to know. And she should have noticed something or known before. Something. Everything was just wrong, and everything sucked. Anika left soon after, unconsolable, and Alice got food at the festival, mourning the loss of her young, carefree life. And feeling like another plum hole for hurting her dear friend like that. She ended up staying out all night, being miserable and feeling nauseous, bloated, and guilty. She texted Anika but never got a response. And she didn't even get to be home long enough for a nap, which massively affected her struggling work performance. What was the point of it all? She just doodled for the day, not giving a damn. Meanwhile, Adam was waiting at home livid that she had stayed out all night and seemed to be avoiding him. There was not enough money in their account, and her work performance had been suffering, something he couldn't afford. And when he saw her big stomach, he knew. Horror hit his system in a way no drug ever had. Don't tell me, baby doll. Yes, misery was her. But that's not all. Adam, I hate my job. I hate it so much. I want to quit. I know you said we need the money, but I have a work rival now. He's an awful man, and I don't want to go in tomorrow. No, 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 baby doll. This can't be happening right now. He screamed into his hands. He was struggling to cope. We can't afford a baby not right now. Not any of it. You can't quit your job. I need that money. What, 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 what do you mean you need that money? I thought the rent was shared responsibility and I can take a few days PTO to think about it. Adam, I can't keep doing it. I won't. You don't understand, baby doll. By the watcher, why couldn't she just agree with him like she used to? I've got some debts. Gambling debts. The lie slid off of his tongue easily. I, I, I struggle with gambling, baby doll, and I swore I would stop for you, but I did it just one more time over a month ago and I lost big. We need that money because otherwise, otherwise they will do something bad to you and I, I can't lose you. I'm so sorry. Lies, lies, lies. Lies that he knew she would eat up. Or so he hoped. Oh. Oh. Alice's heart sunk at the fear in his voice. Fear over losing her. Is... Is that what that man wants, Boo? He nodded miserably. Oh, I see. Well, I, I won't quit my job right now, then. Not until we get the money. How much? She was afraid. Twenty thousand. Boo, that's a lot of money. How are we- We don't have a choice. Alice shook slightly, feeling the need to throw up rising from her gut. I-, I okay, 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 I, okay, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, I'm, I'm sure, together. But as for this, she gestured at her large belly. 
We can't talk about that now. The money is too important now. Let's just go to the doctors or whatever else. And when it comes, we'll deal with it. But there are options. I looked it up. Options for what? Getting rid of it? Those take money that we can't afford. Adam was quite done talking about this. We need that money within the month. Otherwise, he's going to do something awful to you, baby doll. Why would he come after me when you are the one who owes the money, Adam? I don't understand. I want to get an abortion and I earn some of the money for this household. Adam was shocked that one, she was fighting back, and two, she wanted to get one of those. He didn't like that. The baby might not be something he wanted, but it was still his kid. It could be useful and he didn't like the idea of killing his own kin. Alice, it's just how that gambling ring works. It's a way to make sure I pay. As for that, let's not get too hasty, Alice. It's my body that's changing, Adam, not yours. Well, I am the baby's father, and it takes two to tango, baby doll, so I get a choice, too. That deflated Alice's balloon. You... you want to keep it? With everything that's going on, you would want me to keep it. It's ruining my body. It's our fault, apparently, for not using protection, and I am not comfortable killing something of my own blood, Alice, so yeah, I would. Besides, those things take money, and again, we don't have it. Alice couldn't believe her ears. I can't believe this, Adam. A baby will take even more money. I could get an abortion, and we could just be more careful. No, Alice, I won't support or pay for that. Seriously, you can't just throw a band-aid on something like this. A band-aid is not an abortion. What the hell, Adam? I'm done talking about this. Adam tried to turn flirty, hating that this was necessary. Baby doll, you are really tired, and us arguing like this isn't going to help with anything. Let's just take a shower and I'll give you a massage. Some sleep will do us good. No. Don't touch me. She was very firm. Let's just go to bed. We'll figure this out tomorrow. She was firm. Voice devoid of emotion. But on the inside, she hated being here with him. Hated that no one seemed to care what she wanted, that he didn't seem to care. Of course he was the father and he deserved a choice too. After all, they had both done it together and it was consensual. And she hated that there was a slight glimmer of truth to his reasoning. She just wanted a quick, easy solution. But was this the right way? There were other options. She just hadn't looked into them. Maybe she should. She needed to talk to someone. Really talk to someone. She wanted to talk to her mama. But she had died a long time ago. Maybe her father? Or someone else? <sighs> she needed to think. Oh boy. <laughs> oh man, was that a whammy of an episode. Um, oh boy. Okay, um... Yeah, so those topics are not exactly the most comfortable for me, but I am kind of get, enjoying the darker, more realistic side of this story. Um, being able to explore it, I don't really tend to do this sort of gameplay or even story-wise, but on occasion I do like to delve into it. Um... But yeah, Alice is kind of struggling. I mean, this is all very sudden, and she was already on rocky ground, and now there's a baby in the middle of it, and she doesn't want the baby, and it's like, what to do? But anywhere she turns, it's like people are telling her, don't do it. And, you know, there's, there's glimmers of truth. You know, it's not just the only option. Um, you know, I mean, look at Anika, look at, look at everything, you know, and as for Adam, while he's definitely not a good guy at all, well, it does take two to tango, and, you know, you gotta get the sperm, you gotta get the egg, and it was a, you know, thing that they both did and agreed, 
even if Alice is having second thoughts and everything else, she's still, you know, unfortunately, it's just all a big mess, you know? Um, so it's going to be interesting to see where Alice goes from here, what Adam does from here. I mean, 20000 is a lot of money. He did up the amount by five grand, uh, that being Adam. He told her 20000 when in reality it's 15000 So what does he want that extra five grand for? Great question. As for who she needs to talk to, well, she's struggling. She's not sure who to talk to. She wanted to talk to Anika, but we saw how that worked out. And Adam is not on board. And now she's questioning if she should. And she's not got a lot of time. So, yeah. Oh, boy. With that being said, I am officially caught up on photos. Officially caught up on the story, which means I can play, I can play, I can play. I'm so excited. Um, and this pretty much marks the unofficial halfway point, honestly, for this prequel. Like, a little over halfway, actually. Um, so hopefully not too horribly many parts left. Um, and then Adam and Alice's story is concluded. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this Through the Veil episode. I know it was kind of a, a bit of a rough one. Um, however, I am just very proud of the photos and the argument as much as it pains me to admit um so yeah oh gosh but anyway um yeah so just depending on how quick I can play and get the thing situated because these do take a little bit of time there may or may not be a through the veil for next week um and there might be who knows uh so yeah um, we will see them probably within the next two weeks, honestly. So, yeah. Wish Alice and me some luck. Do, do we like Adam? Do we want to wish Adam luck? Or do we just want to say screw him? I don't know. <laughs> I'll let y'all decide. Um, but yeah. So, thanks so much for listening. Have a great week. And I will see you all next time. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. It's up to y'all. <laughs>